Hey everyone, welcome back. I do hope you managed to pick up the primed ammo stock mod from Barrow, as it is actually really good. Even more than I thought at first. Magazine size mods typically have a bad rap in the history of Warframe because they don't reflect in the arsenal stat numbers. Even though it is an actual DPS increase, basically you reload less often so you have more sustained DPS. Too many people are caught up in a different type of DPS, which is known as damage per screenshot, or DPT, damage per thumbnail. But sustained DPS is a very important thing. Not only is it particularly important on Steel Path, but it can also make the difference between dying or not if you're forced to reload at a bad time. Now, this isn't to say reload mods aren't useful either. Actually, I remember featuring Prime Tactical Pump in some of my past videos, particularly the Tenant Archiplasmor because DE actually increased the reload from 2.8 to 3 seconds on the Tenant version. When there's a free slot on the build for these kind of utility mods, the Prime Shotgun Reload and Magazine mods are stronger than you think. Non-Shotgun Primaries and Secondaries have a crap Magazine mod that only gives 30%. Their primed mods still fall behind the corrupted mods, which sit at 60, but have negative reload speed. So which one you use depends on how much reload speed matters on the weapon. But even the standard shotgun magazine mod, ammo stock, is 60%. This is stronger than even primed slip magazine and matches the corrupted mod variants, yet with zero penalty. This is nice, but now we have primed ammo stock, which completely blows all the other magazine mods in the game away. It offers over double the magazine size, giving 110%. This effectively means you ignore one entire reload cycle, and a bit extra since the magazine is over twice as large. For weapons that have a high reload time to DPS ratio, meaning they spend a lot of time reloading compared to shooting, this mod is a huge boon. Now, what is the direct competitor? Why Prime Tactical Pump, of course. While the gap isn't as big between shotguns and other weapon variants for primed reload mods, shotguns still enjoy the best reload mod available in the game at plus 100%. This effectively halves your reload time, so what is better? Outside of unique reload mechanics and weapons with unique perks, we can just compare the ratio of reloading to DPSing. Prime Tactical Pump cuts your reload time in half. This effectively is the same as reloading half as often. Primed ammo stock doubles your magazine size and another 10% extra. Do you see what this means? Primed ammo stock also makes you reload half as often by doubling your magazine, but goes even further with an extra 10%. So in most applications, primed ammo stock actually comes out ahead. Who would have thought that a magazine mod would finally make it into the meta? But actually, it doesn't end here. We need to take weapon arcanes into account now. Primary Merciless increases reload speed already. This means it dilutes the benefit of Prime Tactical Pump if you use both on the same build. This means the gap between Primed Ammo Stock and Prime Tactical Pump gets even larger. If you use Deadhead, this doesn't apply, but most of the time people will be using Merciless. So if you're going to slot Prime Tactical Pump in the past, you will definitely be slotting Primed Ammo Stock instead now in almost all cases. The main exceptions that come to mind are weapons that reload one at a time or are battery focused. This is because battery weapons automatically start reloading after a short delay whenever you stop shooting. If you do not find yourself constantly emptying the weapon, it may be more beneficial to keep reload speed instead, which reduces the amount of time before the reload begins. A larger magazine on the other hand, which lets you shoot more, means the reload initiates slower, which means if you don't pause long enough, you can still drain out the entire magazine. That said, if the battery weapon already reloads fast, or you never find yourself ever running low, and you do want the chance to spam more, this is where magazine size can come in handy also. The same logic applies for single-shot reload weapons. Faster reload lets you fill back up faster and be ready to go, whereas a larger magazine gives you more in reserve if you unexpectedly need it. This one is more of a playstyle preference if you want to reload a full mag faster, or risk a partial reload only but have shots in reserve since you don't empty the whole mag. But that stuff is complicated. So how about instead, we're going to take a look at weapons that benefit the most from this mod today. We've established that in most circumstances, if you can fit it on the build, you will want primed ammo stock now instead of primed tactical pump. Remember the purpose of magazine mods are to increase sustained damage, not damage per screenshot or damage per thumbnail. So let's take a look at some weapons quickly. First up is Tenant Arga Plasmor. This is a Toxin Tenant Plasmor. I have two builds going on today. The first one is built for Viral Hunter Munitions with a Bane for scaling the slash. This version doesn't use Prime Tactical Pump because we're getting Viral from Chilling Reload. The modus setup pushes our crit to 88% and status to 95.2, but I understand some people don't like this mod. So if you're willing to give up a little bit of DPS, and you can improve the quality of life by using either Prime Ammo Stock or Prime Tactical Pump here. 
If you just want more damage per screenshot, you could throw in Prime Point Blank, but I wouldn't recommend this, as the build already has Galvanized Savvy on it, which does actually work on Tenet Plasmore now. Two statuses will match Prime Point Blank, which should be super easy with Galvanized Multi-Shot, and Plasmore has Forced Impact too, up to 29 meters and scales with Galvanized Acceleration to 55 meters at full stacks. The second updated build assumes you have an external source of viral, be it a Panzer or a melee primer. Moda's setup is perfect for Contagion Primers because you need to double jump to throw it anyways and this will also proc Moda's setup in the process. Because we didn't need innate viral, this is where we've opted for a primed ammo stock. Notice how my magazine more than doubled to 21, but my reload only increased to 2.3. Primary Merciless is still on the build. I prefer this over Deadhead so that we still benefit from reload speed. As Plasmor doesn't really need much more headshot damage because of Hunter Munitions and you're able to easily hit everything in the crowd due to the infinite punch through, especially with Galvanized Savvy finally working on it. This is the current optimal plasma build in my opinion, if you have external viral. For each weapon, I'll just follow it up with a quick showcase demonstration. Nothing special, but just so you can see how it handles. First, the Viral Plasmor, and the second is the Raw Toxin Hunter Munitions with the Contagion Primer. Now the second weapon today is Corinth Prime. This is the only shotgun on the list with a fat AoE launcher functionality. It's a little bit quirky, but the Aldvar of Corinth Prime has insane base damage in god tier status. Its only problem? It can't crit properly, so that's why the build has no crit chance as we're gonna source it from Combat Discipline Arcane Avenger instead, specifically only for the Corinth Showcase though. So all of the other shotguns I will probably be running Arcane Tempo, but this particular one I'm also slapping on an aura for Combat Discipline in Arcane Avenger. This is basically a worse version of the Red Crypt Brahma build on any frame video I put up last week. The biggest problem for Corinth Prime in the quality of life aspect is the reload time at 3 seconds, and how the Altfire burns 4 shots in a 20 magazine. This made the Altfire very unpopular. It also fails to detonate if it hits anything before a set distance, or if you Altfire it again manually detonate it in flight. But Prime Demo Stock fixes this problem, so as an AoE primary we need Viral modded onto the weapon itself. I've chosen Toxic, Barrage, and Shilling Reload. This only gets the status to 80%, which is enough to be serviceable especially with the extra multi-shot, but I'll mention alternatives later. On the other hand, we have now stacked 70% reload speed from Shilling Reload and Merciless. It doesn't make sense to slap on more reload speed for quality of life. Galvanized Savvy also doesn't work on the AoE. It also has only a 4% critical chance, so crit chance mods are useless. Shotguns also can't use Prime to Firestorm. So enter Prime Demo Stock, which increases the mag size from 20 all the way up to 42. Now you have 10 alt fire shots available and 2 bonus primary fire shots. This makes the alt fire an actually usable DPS mode without feeling like a super copium version of Kuva Brahma. This is how we breathe life back into the alt fire and actually make it decent. You don't want to put Galvanized Acceleration in the X list because it makes it harder to detonate the alt fire on time. I've opted for Vigilante Supplies for the free Vigilante set bonus and because the falloff is already pretty decent on the primary fire. Also you can burn through the ammo pretty fast with the alt fire spamming because it uses 4 per shot. So just make sure you have Prime Share footed if you're using this though as it does have self stagger. For your pet, you can even bring a Darza to stack Avenger with Cat's Eye if you want to guarantee crits, but it isn't mandatory. If you want more reliability to proc Avenger faster at the start of the mission, you can instead drop Shotgun Spats for Moda setup instead. This will push your status above 100% on the alt fire when you're using it, while also pushing crit chance to 60% on the primary fire before you've managed to proc Avenger to use the alt fire. So this is just a little bit of footage of the Corinth Prime. Next up are our one hit wonders. First I want to say I will not cover Exergis here in favor of the Kuva Heck instead. I feel Kuva Heck surpasses Exergis for its intended niche outside of Riven setups for a slash Exergis. I understand Exergis is a projectile and works well for Meg Bubble, but we're looking at the potential of primed ammo stock today on the weapon itself only. 
Because the two weapons cover the same niche and Kuvahek can't come with a chosen innate element as well as actually crit properly without relying on combat discipline and avenger, I see Hek as the superior weapon. The only real difference is the Exorgist is a status slash weapon whereas Kuvahek is more crit focused hybrid that uses hunter munitions. Also the 60% element bonus on Kuvahek actually makes the raw DPS surpass Exorgist also. Now Kuvahek is a very specialized weapon. This is one of two builds I'm going for today. It is a raw corrosive build with punch through. The punch through is what lets it extend beyond single target. It isn't hurting for damage really, so improving quality of life on this weapon is pretty important. Using Prime Damo Stock and Set of Prime Tactical Pump increases mag to 8 from 4, but also increases reload to 1.9 seconds. This isn't too bad, but it is a little bit on the higher end. This is mostly an even trade off though, as this is a special setup. We're using Prime Deadhead for single target killing, like Liches, Sisters, and Demlists. In those cases, you also want to drop Seeking Force for Primed Bane. We don't care as much about reload because we want burst DPS, and your entire point is just to kill off an elite mob. 8 magazines mean 8 shots before a reload or 2 lethal alt fires, which is even good for recovering if you miss the head. And you can even get the headshot multiplier from Deadhead. If we're using this for normal play instead, honestly, I would run Merciless, which does close the reload gap difference, but 1.5 seconds is also low enough, it's very tolerable already, so you'd still go primed ammo stock. Most people do not notice reloads until they're beyond the 1 second to 1.2 second mark. 1.5 seconds is still very respectable. If you want pure toxin, just drop charged shell for contagion spread. The final build is Viral Hunter Munitions. Unfortunately, I don't see how this can fit primed ammo stock on this, so I would not recommend using that mod on a Viral Heck setup. This is because we end up with using one extra mod slot for punch through that the Plasmore didn't previously need. Although if you don't really like Moda's setup, you could drop that for primed ammo stock in here. Now some quick damage showcases to show that it still works fine. This is going to be the Raw Krosa build first and the Viral Hunter Munitions build second. The next weapon on the list is Tigris Prime. This is the last of the low magazine high DPS shotgun arch types. Unfortunately, the game has not been kind to Tigris and it has long since fallen out of favor. Sporting extremely low crit chance and below average status, it's very difficult to make this weapon work comfortably, but if you do want to use it, primed ammo stock would give you 4 shots now, but the crit and status still remain a problem. This build would either go primed corrosive in these two slots, or 60-60 viral mods to feel slash procs. Merciless cuts the reload down to 1.4 seconds by itself, but I still wouldn't use this weapon anymore as I don't really have a showcase for this weapon today. But if you were to use this weapon still, this is what it would look like. The Exilus could be used for galvanized acceleration to aid the fallout problems, but Tigris does have indefinite range and only loses half its damage at the cap of 20 meters, so it doesn't have as clear benefits as on other shots shotguns, but with a fully stacked galvanized acceleration, it would extend out to 40 instead. Let's just move on to the next one. For Kuvacomb, you will want one with a toxin element. I do not have a Kuvacomb, so we will have to make some assumptions here with a regular one. Kuvacomb is similar to the Kuvahek build from earlier, except its main draws a sustained fire on the spool instead of burst damage. Because of this, you won't be priming for comb much and also won't be proccing modus setup much. It's also capable of slashing naturally and doesn't need hunter munitions. Therefore, with those two free slots, we're opting to slot in shotgun spats to give the Kuvacomb much needed fire rate to shorten the spooling period and improve the DPS at max spool. For the other mod we're slotting, you have a choice between chilling reload to make a viral, or the cold 6060 mod. You need to pick between 30% faster reloads and 1.6 times more status, as the Kuva Comb doesn't have 75% as shown here, but actually base 90 status. Going cold 6060 will push this to 144%. The reload is still the same 2.0 seconds from the non-Kuva variant like this one. 
the Kuva Coma actually has base 19% crit chance and not what's shown here. So building for crits like this is viable because it will push it up to 57 critical chance instead. The Kuva variant has massively worse falloff by an insane amount, so Galvanize Acceleration is basically mandatory. It has zero problems with DPS, so I would recommend running Ammo Case Carrier and even optionally a Scavenger Aura. Obviously, I can't showcase the Kuva Coma if I don't own it, but note that it has slightly less magazine than the non-Kuva variant shown here. With Primed Ammo Stock, the Kuva variant reaches 439 ammo in the mag. I would strongly recommend running Arcane Tembo with Comb also. This does give you the option to drop Shotgun Spaz if you want to fit Galvanize Savvy on for more damage and push status even up to 216% for Slash. It's actually better than Shotgun Spaz for max DPS, but means it will spool up to max a bit slower, even with Arcane Tempo. Now, this is a ridiculous amount of magazine size, and honestly, I think you can already tell how well this will handle just by watching this demo of shooting the normal comb until it drains out. The next weapon on the list is our sample bubonical build, an example of how primed ammo stock interacts with a battery weapon. Primed ammo stock gives you a 57 magazine. This lets you shoot for an extremely long time. The Alfar has an 8 viral, so we don't need to mod for it. Galvanize Savvy is enough to get the status chance of the Alfar to 100% alone. Keep in mind, Galvanize Savvy, though, is still bugged and does not work on the damage component for the AoE of the Alfar. That is fine because we're only using it to hit 100% status for the AoE for Viral. It does work on the primary fire though, so it will do double duty and gives us extra base damage for that. This way we can combine both a raw corrosive build on the primary fire and also has Viral from the alt fire and Hunter Munitions with just two mod slots instead of three, and this isn't even a lich weapon. The primary fire is innate toxin and we can slap prime charge shell on it. This lets us easily cut down fodder instantly with a massive amount of corrosive damage while also slashing the armored targets to bypass and multiplied by viral on the alt fire. There are alternative mods you can try and squeeze on such as seeking force and shotgun spaz that compete with the slot used by primed ammo stock. It is up to you on what kind of quality life mod you want in that slot, just keep in mind Shotgun Spaz can be covered by Arcane Tempo. It really is a simple build with insane firepower, but I'm going to showcase it with Primed Ammo Stock. Galvanize Acceleration is pretty handy, the falloff isn't too bad on the weapon, but honestly the projectiles do feel a little bit slow, so it's more for that reason. Now I got one last one to talk about today. This one is Phantasma. Now I don't actually own one, but let's just take a look at the codex for a quick second. Humor me for a moment as a thought experiment. The primary fire has a tick rate of 12 per second at base. Ticks in Warframe burn 0.5 ammo, so it uses 6 ammo per second, or burns the 11 magazine in 1.833 seconds. Reload takes half a second. Most weapons that take this little time to burn their magazine at base fire rate, I would want to buff the reload speed or magazine size. If you run just a single fire rate buff, whether shotgun spaz or arcane tempo, it already takes less than one second to dump the entire magazine and you're still reloading for half a second. So now you're literally spending one third of your DPS cycle reloading. So if you could actually slot reload or magazine, I would pick magazine for Phantasma. This will cut the time spent reloading from around 33% of the DPS cycle to just 20% or 1 5th instead of 1 3rd, while also extending your single burst period. Going faster reload wouldn't give us as good of a ratio since it's only 100% instead of 110, and it also doesn't extend the burst period, which is already too short on this weapon. For a weapon with such short bursts, this is not good. Basically, the more relative time you spend reloading compared to actually shooting, the more useful Primed Ammo Stock for a larger magazine becomes compared to Prompt Tactical Pump for reloading instead. And don't even get me started on how Merciless dilutes reloads in the Phantasma example as I didn't even touch on that. Finally, Phantasma also has an alt-fire. Remember the Javlock Rhino video that I talked about for internal bleeding slash nuking? Well, on Phantasma, more magazine buffs the damage just like the throw on Javlock. So adding an extra 110% magazine means 2.1 times more damage on the burst of the alt-fire charge of Phantasma. 
If I assume you have Arcane Temple, it will take only 1.1 seconds to reach full charge and launch all of its damage at once, instead of the 0.53 seconds on the normal 11 magazine. While not a top pick for one of the first mods to slot into a build, Primed Amoslock has definitely cemented its place as an extremely competitive 8th mod slot pick for shotguns. This is particularly important because of its insanely high percentage scaling compared to other magazine mods from any other weapon archetype. In particular, this makes a very big difference on weapons that have insane alt-fire burst potential and put all their eggs in one basket, such as Exodus or Kuva Heck or the alt-fire Phantasma. It makes other builds that use multiple ammo per shot also more comfortable, such as Corinth Prime's Alt Fire. It also fixes the frequency of reloading on certain weapons like the Kuva Comb with fire rate buffs and spamming the Max Spool that would make you spend a lot more time on lengthy reloads. This also applies to weapon like Phantasma and basically any weapon with a high reload time to burst time ratio due to burning through the mag too quickly. Finally, it also gives a different feel to battery weapons because they reload independently of your actions whenever you stop shooting. You get extended burst DPS so you have more time to plan your reload window, or as needed, emergency damage, whereas a reload build will shorten the delay but isn't as impactful for sustained burst and doesn't offer you emergency rounds if you actually need them. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Sisters of Parvos and Plague Star updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you info first once more new war info drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.